Hello, Joe Lautner here, guest host of the Tech Home Builder webcast series. And with me today is Stuart Wrench of ATX LED. I've known Stuart for some time now. And the topic today is LED lighting, but it's not uh, just your bulbs that you're getting at Home Depot. It's a complete system. Um, and it's really about the technology running on DC low voltage. Um, we're gonna talk about a little bit about the technology, a little bit about the company, and uh, some of the things that they do, their, their special sauce, and how they're uh, bringing this to the builder market, and uh, also through integrators and other trades. Stuart, how are you? I'm doing great. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, it's great to be talking to you about this. I love this category. There's so many benefits to it, um, and I sure. hope we can get through all of them today. So Stuart, this isn't your first rodeo. I know you've, uh, from, from your other business, give us a little bit about your background. Yeah, so uh, I've been you know, breaking ground, trying new things since uh, my early 20s. I started my first business uh, as an integrator in South Florida uh, many, many years ago at this point and uh, quickly realized that I, I liked the, the concept of building technology solutions more than actually implementing them on an individual project basis. So um, successfully sold that first company and, and started up IHEGI, which is when I first met you. Um, IHEGI was focused on, on bringing a new category to the custom install channel, which was the ability to do remote monitoring and management. Um, with my background in um, R&D and uh, computer and electrical engineering, uh, I graduated from Georgia Tech with, with a degree in that, I saw an opportunity to bring a lot of things that were being done in the, uh, in the server room space for monitoring. And so we invented the, the category for uh, AV remote management and uh, ultimately sold that company about three years ago to Control4 which as we all know now is living inside of snap sure sure and and how did you stay on with uh with that group for after the acquisition not terribly long yeah i, I was okay. uh, i was only there post acquisition for about three months and then i went and uh, took a sabbatical got to get to know my children and uh, exercise yeah. all the things i had failed to do for for the previous uh, 14 years of uh, building companies and like all entrepreneurs, you uh, got antsy and you went out and looked for your next project. What got you into this category? What, what about it attracted you to this business and the category? You know, I, I actually met the the founder of this business um, basically right after I, uh, I left Control 4. And I saw a really interesting technology. I saw, um, you know, the opportunity to, to do something new and innovative. And I looked at him, I said, I'm tired, I'm, I'm on sabbatical, <laughs> and, and I moved on. Uh, but over the next two years, uh, mutual friends kept kind of pushing us back together, saying, hey, go, go check out what he's doing, you know, see, see what kind of progress he's made. And right there at the tail end of 2019, uh, I started digging in and uh, started with some light consulting. And then ultimately, during COVID, actually, I uh, grew the passion and realized that the this was finally at a cusp where uh, the markets were ready to adopt a, a, a great change. The product was really well baked. Uh, there were customers who were loving it. And uh, so in July, in the middle of this pandemic, I joined a company as CEO and uh, had only met two of the people in person <laughs> uh, prior right. to, uh, to yeah. joining. So it's been an interesting transition uh, this year. It's, it's weird times there. So, you know, LED lighting is a smoking hot category right now. It's been smoking hot for a while and it's evolving quickly. There's certainly some challenges with it. Why don't we talk first about some of the key benefits of the LED that we're talking about. It's not bulbs, again, that I said earlier, it's more of a complete system. Um, there's a lot of unique quality of light features uh, in the technology. There's some unique control capabilities. Let's first talk about the benefits that someone gets when they put in a good quality LED lighting system. Sure, um, you know, good quality light, LED lighting can can bring lots of, of unique benefits. <clears throat> you know, everything from, you know, and a lot of them are answering some of the early problems. And I know we can we can chat about you know, some of the problems with LED lighting uh, as well later. But um, you know, really really good lights will not have flicker, they're going to be able to, to dim, to be able to precisely control uh, light output and, and to just create a, a really uh, full and immersive lighting experience. Uh, you know, on, the, on the flip side, you know, however, we know that LED lighting can be uh, horrendous. It can create high strain. It can uh, flicker visibly and or uh, subliminally. 
but you know, when done right, really good lighting can create a healthier environment uh, through circadian rhythm uh, control. It can, um, you know, again, have perfect dimming down to um, you know, 0% in our case, uh, all, the, all the way down to off. <laughs> right, right. I know over the years, being in this industry, my house has always been an experiment and trying to match dimmers and LED drivers, um, and that flicker is brutally annoying. Um, it's hard to match all that stuff up, so we'll talk a little later about how you sort of solve that problem. What about the uh, the color of the light and the tuning of the light and, the, and, and how it impacts what you see in the space, in the room? Sure. Yeah. So you know, there's a couple couple different things. You know, on, on all LEDs, there's a there's a rating called CRI, which stands for Color Rendering and Index. And essentially, LEDs naturally aren't very good at reproducing reds. Uh, that's the you know, the downfall of uh, especially inexpensive, uh, low quality LEDs. And so the higher the CRI in number, the the better, more realistic uh, compared to natural light. Uh, the, the colors are going to appear. And so a lot of LEDs out there on the market, especially in the early days, were somewhere around CRI 80, and everything's just very flat, uh, especially as, it, as it's red. If you had a red tablecloth, um, it would appear much more black, for example, or red fruits or, or a classic example of, of something, uh, tomatoes. Um, I've, we've got a, a slide, slide there that kind of shows the difference between rendering between CRI 80 and CRI 90. Sure. Uh, and, you know, that's it, it. The color rendering index, it's not something that's unique to us. It's not like we, we've invented the ability to go higher, but we've felt that it's very important to include the best and get as high of a color rendering index as possible um, mm -hmm. in, in order to, to overcome the, the problems. And then there's the other form of, of color, which is color temperature. And, you know, traditionally with, um, I mean, even back to incandescent bulbs, and especially as we move through complex fluorescence and all of the, the various different evolutions of lighting that we've seen over the last 20 years, um, you, you'd go pick a, a, a color. So you'd get daylight or warm white, uh, and, and you were kind of stuck with that one, one light. And more recently, companies have started offering solutions where you can actually shift that. And it can be shifted either on demand to change the mood of a room or uh, you know, to follow the science of circadian rhythm, it can actually follow the sunset, sunrise and sunset and shift to those more naturally light becomes much warmer colors at the end, uh, beginning and end of the day. So you can uh, shift during the day, have very good bright light for clarity for a task work. But then as you're working towards sleep, pulling the blues out, giving yourself a warm and relaxed place uh, to, to, to go back to. Got it. And so obviously there's a lot of control there. How are you? How are you controlling the lights, the dimming, the color tuning, all those things you've been talking about? So for our system, as you mentioned, it's it's a it's an end-to-end -end system. Um, we took the the approach of let's let's put everything on the table and let's just say we have a blank sheet of paper and we get to design lighting. Um, and, and this and so what we came up with was an end-to-end -end DC solution, uh, DC low voltage solution. So uh, from the beginning at the distribution out to low voltage switches and then out to the LEDs, that's all low voltage DC um, in there. And then the, the controls can be done either from the local uh, local switches, through apps, through other uh, third-party integrations, uh, of you know, really any of the, the control system brands. Um, and it can be done, you know, as I said, on demand uh, or through scheduling and, and more advanced features like that if, that, if that's the desire of the customer. So the light fixtures and the light switches, it's an integrated solution all on that DC backbone? That's correct. Yeah, so you know, if, if you'll allow me to wax a little bit uh, you know, historical, you know, the, the, the reason that we landed here, you know, you know, 1993, the, the first high brightness LED was, was invented uh, by Shuji, Nak Shuji Nakamura. And um, you know, I think right then people started to see the applications. Okay, we can we can actually emit a bright light out of out of a diode, not just a calculator, um, you know, backlight. And you know, so well, what we did, it's we repeat history. Just like when we went from radio to television, we started first television shows were effectively radio shows shoved into the box that was now a TV, and we didn't really take a step back and say, what, what should this TV be doing? And so we took an LED and we're like, okay, let's shove it onto this 120 volt AC um, line. And 
in doing that, it created all of the problems with LED. All of the, the promises and the, and the great things about LED were hidden away because of the, the architecture they were shoved into. You're putting AC-DC transformation at the very last step, which is, creates heat. You're co-heating with, with the hot light. Those peak components die. You're having AC really close to the device, so you get flicker. You get no audible noise. Again, all of the things that, that people complain about over the years about LED, it's strictly because of the, the way these LEDs are being shoved into the, the old architecture. Well, basically, why run line voltage from your electric panel to a low voltage light source? You just you, you, you got extra wire, you got extra power, and you step it down at the end. And so your approach, how does, how does that work? How does it work around that? Where do you actually make that transfer? Yeah, so there's a central distribution box, uh, whether it be co-located near the the AC uh, breakers or in a you know discrete closet type location, a low voltage panel. Um, we do dual and redundant uh, power supplies so that you know, if one power supply uh, were to fail, the whole house doesn't go dark. It simply limps limps along on uh, on half power, um, and from there we do daisy chain home runs uh, out. To, uh, to up to 100 watts of light. And that, that 100 watts is key because that keeps us inside of the NEC class two limit, which um, avails us to a lot of uh, higher safety standards, lower fire risk and, and things like that that come along with that. So from the central distribution panel, you know, it can maybe an average 2000 square foot house will have between four and six home runs that will go past, you know, one, one run will may go to the, mat, uh, the uh, owner suite to the, you know, to the bedroom, to the closet, to the um, to the bathroom, and then another one will go out to another section of the house. Um, and then at the, each of the switch locations, we put our smart intelligent dimmers uh, into the switch locations, um, and and they look they're decor style switches. There's it's not a you know an advanced keypad or something that people have to learn how to use the system. They walk in, you know how to turn the lights on and off, and then we drive the LEDs from the uh, from the that switch location. So if you if you have a if you have multiple rooms control uh, daisy chain from a top wiring topography, is the switch program to control individual lights? Um, zones of lights. Zones of lights. Okay, so right. so one switch still controls a zone as yep. as in a okay typical. Yeah, if you if you look at one of our wiring diagrams that you know electrician would use as they're as they're looking at their blueprints, um, the topology is identical. To what they're used to they run from the breaker box in the old world in our world they run from the distribution box and they go out past uh, 15 lights uh, by nec code for high voltage and they go past you know they go up to 15 lights uh, worth of rooms in our uh in our architecture so it's a it's so all your branch your branch goes to a switch that switch controls a load then the branch can tear off go to another switch then that switch controls that individual that discrete load okay exactly so obviously this is um, must be really relegated to new construction. So yes, builders, um, they're going to jump into this technology and they're going to look at it and go, this is different. Um, and you know, builders are also, if they're production builders, they might um, be looking to add LED lighting, but maybe not lighting control up front. How do you do? You have to have the whole system to make it work, or how do you get it started, and how can you scale it? Right. So our entire our system, we have uh, product offerings from simple on off and dimming all the way to our full smart control with tunable white uh, capabilities. Um, and, and all of those devices, all of the pieces run on the exact same wiring infrastructure. So, uh, you know, spec builder uh, could come in, put the bones in, put a, maybe one smart switch just to show show off the capabilities and then allow for upgrades. Same thing with uh, you know, semi-custom or custom homes, they don't have to go all in to, to begin with. And, and then at the end, if somebody wants to upgrade a room, they pull out the wall switch. You don't even have to get onto a ladder. You take the take the dumb switch off, plug the wires into the smart switch and put it back in the wall and you're you're off to the races. So you can put that you can you can deliver a house with LED lighting um, with standard switches, I'm assuming of a relatively standard price and then have an upgrade option to add the automation. Right, yeah, our, our base systems are, are typically about price parity with 
um, with traditionally uh, lit homes uh, from oh. on our base package. So it's, it's really simple for them to, to get in. They're not feeling any um, major price uh, price bump there, but then the ability to, to upsell uh, or offer a higher quality and end result, it's super, it's very simple and can be done at any phase of construction, uh, whether it's pre-planned or not on, the, as I said, on that same infrastructure. And, and you know, one of the things that they, they see along the way is that the, the labor is just so much easier for, for something like this, you know, pulling high voltage Romex, all the uh, NEC and, and building codes that specify how you have to protect those wires and pull those. The amount of time required to pull the wire is, is much less when you're using 18 gauge skinny wire like we're using versus 12 gauge uh, high voltage wire. So they're saving they're saving time there. And then the, just the way that we do all of our terminations, we've thought we've been very thoughtful and careful to identify places in the installation process that we can shave off you know, 30 seconds, a minute, a few minutes. Um, you know, our lights, for example, I was speaking to an electrician the other day who, who looked at that and felt like it was going to save three to four minutes per light uh, because of the, the less number of steps. We have simple strip and poke connectors. Just take a little bit off the end of the wire and shove it into, in, into the connector and you're off to the races. Yeah, I, I worked for uh, some great engineers in my day and one always had this mantra and it wasn't the cost of the system it was the total cost of install of the installed solution and that's uh, that's Absolutely. critical so in, I'm, I'm envisioning a house now with romex only running up to the outlets and then you've got low voltage wiring going up to your your switches and your fixtures what's the reception i mean that's 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 scary to builders who have been running romex and electricians for the last X X number of years, um, yeah. how's how's it being received? You know, it's been been received uh, remarkably well. You know, again, the the, the thing that the temp tends to be uh, a door opener for us is this labor uh, labor reduction side of things because they realize that, that that they can get in and out a whole lot faster um, on this. And and you know, it is scary, and it's still we're still in the earlier earliest phases, but the world has gone through a transition. You know, historically. We let homes with uh, with gas, and there was a point in time when uh, electric lighting uh, came in, and there was even a time when people put both into a home just because they didn't know whether uh, electric light was going to stick around. You know? And yeah, we've seen the writing on the wall for the last 15 years. You know, I've been hearing about the DC home, and I've been hearing about you know, LED lighting coming and, and and taking over, and that that wave is getting stronger and stronger. Uh, pushing things forward and so the train has left the station at this point and i think most people have have recognized that dc is here to stay and ac eventually will wane out um you know with the timeline where you're not going to have uh, any houses being built with ac i can't tell you yet but it it will be coming down the pipe in the future so most of the the forward-looking people that i've spoken with have had no problem accepting uh, accepting that concept here so what about aesthetics? I know in my time when we were getting into lighting uh, fixtures, um, four inch aperture, round, square, um, you're either your lighting designer or your interior designer or whomever was caring for the aesthetics of the space, um, there's a plethora of fixtures out on the market. Um, how are you, because this is, this is obviously not um, a f uh, uh, maybe for an entry level house. Actually, I'll ask that question next. But where are you with the aesthetics? How's that being received? Sure, we have a we have a core line of lights that we produce uh, you know, on our own that handle uh, you know flush down lights, recess down lights, um, strip lighting, gimbal lighting. You know, it's kind of a little bit of of, of the core of everything. Um, but then you know historically, our company when we first started, we were taking off the shelf LEDs and um, basically abusing them <laughs> to, to turn them into low voltage uh, systems because inside of LED, every LED uh, fixture, there is a low voltage LED fixture. Uh, you just, there's an extra component that, that comes out. So one of the things we've been doing over uh, since I joined the company is building relationships with more and more companies. So it makes it simpler. There'll be ordering SKUs, but there are lights out there uh, today that can be bought and more and more, again, are coming to the market to kind of fix those edge cases. But most of the homes that, that we've worked in, we're able to solve you know, 90 plus percent of their lighting solution with our core. And then we have what I like to consider our silver bullet, which uh, is a low voltage DC screw-in lamp. 
both in candelabra format as well as E26. Mm. So you can go down to your local hardware store, grab any off the shelf, um, high voltage standard fixture with a screw in lamp uh, or lamps, bring it on to our system, wire it to the low voltage wiring rather than to high voltage wiring, screw in one of our lamps and that lights up and has the, the high quality dimming just the same way. Um, so it, that opens up that world very easily and that's been what that gets people over. Could that eventually work on like a table lamp where you could actually plug it into a low voltage outlet and drive it that way? I mean, at some point when low voltage outlets are yeah. you know, becoming a thing, you know, at this yeah. point, NEC code's not going to change anytime soon where they require sure. a high voltage outlet on fixed distances. So um, I'm not holding my breath for when that, that happens, but there's no fundamental uh, electrical, mechanical, mm -hmm. or physics based reason to say no to that. And other, what about other, uh, you got any other, what's, what's coming up in other products? I mean, you've got, uh, do I see bathroom fans that are running off of this or? That's right. We, uh, we have a partnership. We, we partner with uh, Delta, uh, who makes the Breeze line of fans, uh, world's largest manufacturer of DC motors. And uh, we, we've just now brought to market uh, bathroom exhaust fans, or uh, you know, in some cases they're used for just air, general air movement. Uh, and, and they run off of our same, uh, same bus, same control system, uh, and bring, brings down the noise a little bit, it brings in the, down the efficiency. And again, it's take the high voltage off the ceiling. Why, why, why run 120 volts to a tiny little DC motor that, that doesn't take a lot? Um, our, our vision and our mission here is to take everything from the switch plate to the top of the ceiling and take away the, uh, the high voltage, move that onto a DC bus. So the obvious next step, uh, ceiling fans is, is in our, in our vision, uh, as well as smoke detectors, uh, or, you know, other, if you look up, find something that has high voltage, we'll be thinking about it down the road. Got it. Got it. Um, so I, those are that you, you're giving us a little peek into the roadmap there. Sure. All right. All right. Well, uh, Stuart, this is great. Um, the category is explosive. Um, it's a unique approach. Um, you know, what, what's, what do you say to someone who, who's, who's, you know, not new to LED, maybe familiar with the more costly solutions? Cause, cause I, I look at LED as the quality LED. You're in that quality LED category. Where 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 are you trying to hit? What market? What what's the how do you define where you think this product fits compared to the other other systems out there um, that are really relegated to that that uber high end of the market? So so we are taking the approach that this is a lighting solution for everyone. Um, we are not focused on strictly up market, um, though we've had quite a few installs that are in very up market uh, type. Uh, type locations, but we, we believe that this change to accepting DC as a uh, as the future needs to happen at scale. And so we, we've been spending a lot of our time with the higher volume builders, building those relationships, working uh, working to uh, to make that shift. Uh, in the meantime, we've been, as I said, uh, you know, mid mid to upper market has been uh, been really good for us uh, for the early adoption, sure. and we see that that trend is moving again or towards the volume as we have more history and more experience as a company. Okay. All right. Well, this is uh, this is exciting stuff. I wish you and ATX the best. Anything that you want to say in wrap up, wrapping up? Um, no, I think, I think that, you know, as I mentioned that the, the benefit now that we've gone to this blank sheet of paper and we've, we've removed the AC and I just really want to want to kind of come back and hit the points. We were rated at, 0.14% flicker because we aren't doing we aren't doing the AC DC transformation. We're not dealing with PWN, which is pulse width modulation, which is how dimming is done in the high voltage world. Um, that 0.14% to put it in context for people who, who aren't familiar with flicker ratings. Um, you know, the state of California has a, a standard called JA8, and their threshold is 30%. Um, and UL has a, a has a rating for good quality low flicker LEDs, and that's at 8%. And again, we're at 0.14%. Um, it, it's non-existent, and, and that flicker is is huge. It, the, the headaches, the eye strain, you know, are real, and, uh, and and I really hadn't fully appreciated it until I had been in spaces that had truly flicker-free lighting. Uh, you know, again, another thing that comes because of our architecture is the ability to do perfect even dimming. I'm sure you've been in a room that has 
you know, four lights on the ceiling. And as you start to dim down, they get a little bit out of whack and then one of them turns off and the other three are still on. Um, again, due to our architecture, we're not using PWM trying to force something to do something it wasn't designed to do. Uh, we, we're driving these with a constant current. So every single light in that room goes down at exactly the same level and turns off at exactly the same point, which is uh, just below, uh, barely visible uh, at, at that point in time. Um, and that and the dimming is also regardless of whether you put a new lamp in. Uh, you might have experienced a place where one lamp died because of the high voltage dying, and then you have one light that's a little bit brighter than the rest of them in the room. Uh, that's just a natural property of LED that they do tend to, to lose power, uh, lose uh, emittance over time. But we're able to adjust for that because we're able to drive that constant current. And I won't get into the deep physics of it. First of all, that's not my bailiwick. Our CTO uh, has explained it to me several times, but uh, the, the, the physics behind the diode uh, and the way that we treat it allow to do compensation for, for age of, of LEDs as well. Um, and then last but not least is the circadian rhythm, being able to, to, to shift from something like a 2700 Kelvin uh, warm uh, light up to you know, 5,000 Kelvin day, bright daylight and, and have that shift either automatically or, or on demand. You know, these are the things that we bring to the market. These are the things that really excite people when it comes to healthy living, healthy lighting, and, uh, and the ability to, to enjoy their space again. Awesome. All right, Stuart, I wish you the best. Thank you Thank for you. coming on today. And um, um, we'll look forward to seeing how things develop for you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I look forward All to right. it as well. Thank you.